Welcome to the Abrams Boxing Show, powered by Last Out Media and brought to you by www.15rounds.com, the worldwide leader in boxing news. Also, Abrams Boxing PR Media Broadcasting, the industry standard for boxing media relations and play-by-play broadcasting. Also, check out www.abramsboxing.com, Abrams Boxing on YouTube, as well as M. Abrams Boxing on Twitter and Mark Abrams Boxing on Instagram. Welcome to another edition of the Abrams Boxing Show. I'm Mark Abrams. I'm coming to you this week from Nashville, Tennessee, where last night I had the pleasure of broadcasting Country Box 4 from the Troubadour Nashville, uh, right down the road here in Nashville, Tennessee. I'll get to those results later. In fact, I have an interview uh, with the winner of the main event, Elijah Williams, also be joining us this week will be Tiafimo Lopez and Erickson Lubin, who I did uh, some uh, short interviews with. In fact, the Lopez was his post-fight uh, press gathering after he won his WBO Junior Welterweight Championship. In fact, that's what we will um, start this week. Uh, last Saturday night, live from the theater at Madison Square Garden, former uh, lightweight world champion Tiafimo Lopez went to 19-1 and as he uh, – won the WBO Junior Welterweight Championship with a 12 round nemesis decision over Josh Taylor. T- uh, Taylor, who's also 19-1 now, in front of a, it was a sold-out crowd, a record crowd at the Hulu Theater Madison Square Garden. 5,151 people uh, got to witness that event, and uh, it was a terrific fight. Teofimo was was excellent in his, um, his decision when he – he had a terrific game plan with the right hand. He couldn't miss the right hand. He was just too fast for Josh Taylor. And I mean, Taylor said he had a bad night. Well, T. Fima Lopez, you know, get, made him have a bad night. The scores were 117, 111, and 115, 113 twice. Uh, from my ringside seat, it, I had a 116, 112 for Tiafimo Lopez. And uh, like I said, uh, after the fight, Tiafimo Lopez met the media last night, uh, right after the fight, and this is how it's saying. Everybody, not a damn fighter in this world can beat me. Trust me. And I think I showed a little bit of that tonight. You guys like the Roy Jones? <laughs> you guys like it? I like bringing the old school. I'm an old school. Fresh for the knockout. He's one of the knockout fans. He's a big guy, you know what I mean? He's a big guy. You know, he's strong. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to survive in the ring. Um, he's got the ring IQ. Going back to the drawing board and seeing what I could do better. Now, how much of the last two years in your head going into this versus life, man? Life, such as life, is always hard. Personal life, you know. Um, I was with somebody for five years that gave me a hard time and uh, really screwed me up mentally. Um, but I can't, I can't really express too much because we're going through the legal custody purposes right now. But uh, that's my next battle right now. It's uh, fighting for my kid. Okay, come on, the doctor got to see you. Let's go. Did, did you did you compartmentalize that? Tonight was for me. Tonight was for me, and I like I like against all odds. I like when I question myself. I do it on purpose. I need the pressure on me because that's what makes diamonds. And tonight I shine very bright tonight. So, so, you know, you know, the first the two fights that you were the underdog, you win. You were the favorite. The, three, the last three fights, you know, they weren't your best. Like you said, do you need everyone counting you out, kind of, to shut everybody up? To no, no, no. You know, that's the thing I don't really want. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think when I was uh, at that pedigree, I would always go back to my ex-wife, and that gave me more issues, more problems, and and it was taking me away from my boxing. So um, boxing is my wife. I married it at 17 years young, and that's my first wife, and I can't disrespect my love. Not for anyone and not for anything. I knew they were going to do something kind of chisty. It took a long time for them to come up with our scorecards. They were trying to figure it out. And um, I told everybody, I was like, listen, man, y'all better not steal it. Ain't no fucking way you can steal it. Were you betting tonight that you were against Lomachenko? Huh? Absolutely. It's only get better, you know? That's what it's all about, challenges. Challenges brings, brings the greatness out of you. Um, I don't know. 
how to say it or express it enough. Walter Elias Disney, who owns ESPN and ABC and everything here that we all are on tonight, that man, he said it best. He says, aim, I, I like the impossible because there's less competition there. 25 years young, seven-time world champion, two-time lineal world champion, two-divisional world champion. I mean, two Hall of Fame careers in one at just 25. You can't tell me I'm not great. You cannot tell me I'm not the double greatest since Muhammad Ali. This is what I do. This is what I do best. Now, just to steer it up, I might retire after this one. Yeah, last one. You have the two ring magazine belts. I know they didn't want to give me the other one. You have the two magazine you have But I got Joe Santa Luquino back there. Yeah. I know you're going to give yeah, me that. Who you want next, bro? Huh? Uh, who you want next? Retirement, man. I'm kind of no. tired. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm not getting paid enough. A million dollars? Get the fuck out of here. Are you seriously retiring? Wait, are you really retiring? Huh? Are you really retiring? Yeah, man. I need to take a, I need to take a break. Yeah, let's go. I'm tired of everybody bullying me. Let's go. I'm young. I'm a kid, too, at heart. And yeah, I, I think y'all need to go after the Devin Haney's, Shakur's, and Tyson Fury's, and all of that. Congratulations. You see Tiafimo Lopez, um, again, I know he doubled down on his retirement on Monday, but I don't think that's going to stick uh, – too much longer. I mean, obviously, he has some personal issues he needs to deal with, as he mentioned early in that uh, press gathering. And I think once he gets that kind of an order, we'll see him back. Um, you know, there, there's fights out there. There's Devin Haney. There's uh, uh, if you want to stick with top rank, there's Jose Ramirez. Arnold Barboza has been calling him out for years and years. So there, there's definitely some interesting fights out there for Tiafimo Lopez. And, you know, the, plus there's the other world champions and the uh, Regis Pro Grace, and uh, we'll get to Adrian Broner. So, you know, there, there's a and Ryan Garcia. So th there's a lot of options at 140 pounds for uh, the takeover, Tiafimo Lopez. Uh, Saturday night in Ontario, California, uh, former 154-pound uh, world champion Jaime Munguia went to 42-0 as he scored a 12-round amateur decision over 37-year-old former world title challenger Sergei Dierovanchenko. Uh, I have not seen the fight, but from all indications, because I've been traveling, uh, I mean, what, what a week it's been for me. I'll get to that at the end. Uh, a lot of people think it's a it's a real fight, a strong fight of the year candidate so far. And we're about halfway through the year. Uh, David Ranchenko is now 14 and five. Uh, that took place at the Toyota Arena in Ontario, California. Both guys landed big shots. Uh, Munguia got, got, got drilled a few times, especially from what I understand in rounds three and rounds five. I know round 11, Munguia may have sealed the fight with a knockdown uh, on a body shot. Scores were 115, 112, and 114, 113 twice for Munguia. Saturday afternoon in London, IBF flyweight champion Sonny Edwards went to 20-0 as he scored a 12-round decision over Andres Campos. Campos loses for the first time. He's now 15-1. That place took place at the Ovo Arena in London, England. It was a you know kind of a close fight that saw Campos uh, land some pretty good shots. Edwards was um, his usual self. Uh, he, I, he's really not a big puncher in there, so he boxed his way, landed some shots, and got the victory by scores of 117-111 on all cards. Friday night in Miami, I was uh, fortunate enough to uh, be part of the broadcast team hosting the pay-per-view as we saw the return of the problem, or as Don King likes to call him, the problem child, Adrian Broner, went to 35-4-1 and as he scored a 10 round round decision over Billy Hutchinson. Hutchinson now 20 wins, three losses, four draws. That was a welterweight bout at the Miami Casino in Miami, Florida. <clears throat> Broner, uh, he had his way with Hutchinson, landed – Shots after shots after shots. Hutchinson was very marked up on his face. Took, you know, he took a, he took a beat in there, but uh, he he was able to go the distance. And uh, you know, I think he actually earned himself another payday or two as an opponent somewhere, a high priced opponent. And uh, his scores were 100 to 90, 99, 91 twice. Uh, it was Broner's first fight in about 28 months. Uh, as, uh, you know, he, he got the victory, got back in there. His first fight with under the Don King promotions banner, a good crowd at the Miami casino, very enthusiastic crowd in there as, uh, 
Broner uh, was up to his up to his antics uh, post fight. So uh, you know, Adrian Broner, I expect him to be back in a few months. I think Don King can maybe hopefully try to do another show in the next few months and keep him busy, or you know, maybe go after a uh, fight with Brian Garcia. Uh, Oscar De La Hoya tweeted out last week for Don to give him a call. And I think actually Don, from what I read, Don King may have called him earlier this week, earlier on Monday possibly, to see what, what the interest is of fight with Ryan Garcia. There's Tiafimo Lopez out there. You know, we'll get into Regis Progress. He's fighting uh, this Saturday. So um, <clears throat> we shall see uh, what happens with Adrian Broner. He's, you know, still just 33 years old. And he's got a huge name. He's a former four division world champion. So he's going to get a major opportunity with the Don King behind him. The co feature saw the W, uh, excuse me, the NABA and NABF, uh, now the NABF flight heavyweight champion, Ahmed Albiali, go to 23 and 1 as he scored a uh, tough 10 round unanimous decision over uh, Rodolfo Gomez. Gomez um, was. Uh, uh, was very tough, very gritty in there, uh, much like we thought uh, in, in the broadcast, uh, me and my broadcast partner, uh, Albert Hainsworth, and uh, Ray Boom Boom Mancini joined us, Noel McKellen, the number one ranked cruiserweight in the world, uh, Erickson Lubin, who I had a chance to talk to uh, coming up soon. So, uh, But uh, Albiali is maybe a fight or so away from getting a big opportunity Big puncher, his only one loss is to John Pascal. In a fight that day, he hurt Pascal a couple times. So that was uh, – so Ahmed Albiali is going to get something pretty good uh, coming up very soon. Also on the card, Guillermo Rigondeaux scored a seventh-round stoppage of a previously undefeated Charlie Clemente. Rigondeaux now 22-3 and three with 15 knockouts. Clemente scores – drops to 12-1. and one. Fight was uh, – fought at pedestrian pace until uh, – Rigondeaux dropped uh, Clemente with a body shot in round seven. The time was 247 of the seventh round. Uh, this uh, also this week, um, let's see, let's see, what we got, got, got here. Uh, Ali Asmalov uh, won a 10 round NAMS decision over Charles Foster in the Showbox main event that took place at the Turning Stone Resort and Casino in Verona, New York, as part of the Hall of Fame weekend. Uh, it was a, um, it was a pr pretty good fight, very close fight, that saw Asmalov uh, win by scores of 96-93 and 95-93 uh, twice and 95-94. He's now 11-0. Foster loses for the first time, and he's now 22-1. Walter Santa Bonis uh, scored a upset last Thursday night in uh, – at the Fancy Springs Resort in Indio, California, Santa Bonas uh, scored a, um, a, a let's see here a, a, a ten round unanimous decision over uh, previously undefeated Manuel Flores. Scores were 190, 99, 91 twice for Santa Bonas. Last night, and that's why I'm in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. We had the uh, we had the show uh, country box number four from the Troubadour in Tennessee. Elijah Williams uh, scored a six-round average decision over tough as nails. Matt Gaver, that was the main event in a, what turned out to be more of a wrestling match. Marklin Bailey scored a slight upset as he scored a, a uh, four-round split decision over Eduardo Aguilar. Uh, Second-round stoppage win for Kevin Torian. He's now 2-0 with two knockouts over Calvin Early. And first-round knockouts for Fernelli Feliz. Eric Ariano, Drayon Merriweather, and Victor Hernandez, all first-round knockouts uh, on the bo uh, Country Box 4. Like I said, the, the winner of the main – and actually, people can uh, watch that show uh, still on Fight.tv, CountryBox247.com, and I247.com. Uh, that's all for free beyond their, those particular websites. So uh, it would be uh, good to uh, – you know, to check out some boxing from Nashville, Tennessee. Right after the fight, I had a chance to talk to the winner of the main event. Good, young, up-and-coming 19-year-old who's now 6-0 six and, six and oh, with two knockouts. His name's Elijah Williams, and this is what he said after the fight. The winner for the main event, set two country boxes in a row, Elijah Williams. Tonight, you, you got, a, got a nice stiff challenge tonight from Matt Gaver. Uh, talk about the fight. Um, he was definitely tougher than I expected, you know. Uh, Definitely a hell of a fighter, you know. Uh, I planned it on getting him up out of there. I could have, 
but he was just tougher than what I thought. You know, he gave me a good fight. Those are the fights that I need, and I'm just going to keep pushing and keep winning. You're still just 19 years old. You go from Bailey, who, you know, gave you some good rounds yeah. last time, mm -hmm. and now Gaber, who, you know, you, you know, he won a couple rounds off you, yeah. according to the judges, and, you know, kept fighting back yeah. and, you know, landed some good punches. Uh, you see a lot of 19 year prospects, they just want layups and, and first round knockouts. Uh, yeah. well, what's the thought process in ta on taking on these, these tough guys early? Um, it's just trying, I'm just trying to get to the next level, man. So, you know, whatever it takes to become that world champion, that's what we're going to do, you know. So, if it means taking those tough fights, then we're going to take those tough fights. We're going to do it a, a day at a time, step at a time. Are these the type of fights that maybe three, four fights down the road that you're going to, uh, I mean, these are the fights that are going to help prepare you for those big fights? Uh, yeah, most definitely, you know. And just other things, you know, I'm in the gym with top work, so that helps too, you know, but definitely these fights are going to help prepare me for those big fights. For some of the people who don't know, you know, you're from Newburgh, New York, can you talk about some of the pe fighters that you do work with? Um, I work with Dronis, you know, um, I work with Chris Algieri, uh, Cordell Booker, Raymond Ford, Richardson Hitchens, so, you know, I got a lot of good work, so, uh, you know. I just try to stay busy and try to stay with the top guys. Uh, so you fought here in April, fought here in May. Excuse me, you fought here in May, fought yeah. here in June. Uh -huh. when, do you, when do you expect? I mean, there's a tough fight. I don't know if we're going to see you in July here. or um, Hopefully. Oh, well. Hopefully I mean, the, we can. The, te the team's right behind me. Uh, yeah. what, what do you think? Are you going to have him back here in July? or Possibly. Possibly. Whatever comes up to the table, we're just trying to we'll stay active and continue to win. So maybe we'll see you back here in July. Here, we'll be back here. Six and six and zero now, and uh, said to two uh, wins over some tough guys. Uh, like he said, even though the records, they're, 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 they're both those guys are better than their yeah. records. In uh, fact, you saw Marco beat the nine and two fighter in the co-main yeah, event tonight. So um, I want to say. Records doesn't matter, man. You can have a dude that's 0-2 and yeah. not got somebody that's 5-0. So it's definitely not the records, you know. It's, it might just be that guy's there. No, no, that's what we were, we were saying on the broadcast. You, 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 you mean, you don't fight records in this game. No, right? no. And like I said, Gaber and Bailey are much better fighters than what their records yeah, indicate. Definitely, definitely. You know, they're both two tough guys. So guys like that, you never know what to expect. What do you want to say to the fans in closing? Uh, I just want to say thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for everyone that came out. And you know, I hope to be here again. Real quick, where, real quickly, where, where the fans social find you on social media? Uh, at Eli underscore the bully on Instagram. There you have it, Elijah Williams, six and oh, two knockouts, two straight bo country box wins yeah. our main event. Yes, sir. Thank you. There you have it, Elijah Williams wins the main event on Country Box 4. The next Country Box will be Tuesday night, July 11th, right down the road to Troubadour, Nashville, Tennessee. <coughs> this weekend, uh, Regis Pro Race on the zone will take on Danielita Zirilla for the WBC Super Lightweight title. Tia Fimo now the big player in the division as well. Uh, other uh, titles, um, Rolando Romero, who, who, who's a world titleist a, as well. And... Uh, that's the WBC, WBO, WBA, and uh, Subriel Matias, the IBF champion. So we've got some good champions, some potential big fights uh, for Regis Progress should he uh, come through this Saturday night in New Orleans, his hometown New Orleans, against Donalito Zarilla. Also on uh, Saturday night, Tim Zhu takes on Carlos Acampo for the WBO interim 154-pound championship. That will be live on Showtime here in the United States, uh, I guess Sunday morning in Australia or Sunday early afternoon in Australia. Uh, also on the card, uh, Raiz Salim takes on Sam Goodman uh, in that doubleheader from down under. So uh, also uh, – Wednesday, uh, the, the Pro Box series continues on Pro Box TV. Super Bantamweight Franklin Gonzalez, 25-2 and two with 25 knockouts, takes on Saul Sanchez, a good fighter out of the Thompson Boxing Stable. 18-2 and two, uh, with 11 knockouts. That will be the main event on Pro Box T TV, who's, uh, uh, like I said, Gonzalez had uh, 25 straight knockout wins to start his career. Coming off two split decision losses, and uh, said Sanchez himself is a good, good, solid fighter. Former three division world champion Emmanuel Navarrete will defend his WBO junior lightweight title against former two time uh, two division world champion Oscar Valdez. That will take place on November, on November, I can't wait, November, August the 12th at the Desert Diamond Arena in Glendale, Arizona. That will be on ESPN 
uh, will televise that. This Saturday from Atlantic City, bxngtv.com. I'll be there. It will be Dimash Nayazov taking Larry Fryers. Joey DeWaco also will be on the card. Uh, also, Payne Boxing and Chiro Perez Promotions will present Rumble in Paradise 5, live international world-class boxing from the Dominican Republic, featuring fighters from the Dominican Republic, Russia, Puerto Rico, Italy, Canada, Venezuela, Colombia. That will take place on June the 18th, Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern. Finally, I had a chance to talk to Erickson Lubin uh, right before the Adrian Broner fight. We touched on Broner a little bit. Uh, he's in camp with Broner, but we also touched on his June 24th fight against uh, against Luis Arias. And this is what Erickson Lubin had to say. Erickson Lubin here, uh, 24 hours away. Your stable mate, Adrian Broner, weighed in. Uh, how did he look in camp? He looked good. He looked, looked good. good. Looked ready. What's up, Teddy? A couple, uh, you, we'll just get to you, Roy, quick. A couple weeks away, Luis Arias live on Showtime. Uh, sure. Talk about the fight. Uh, it's been a lot, uh, a little bit of back and forth, mouthing off. We've been doing on the internet a little bit, you know, but um, it's time to back it up. It's time to back it up, and I'm more than ready. I'm ready to fight now. I was ready to fight weeks ago, and, you know, I'm just looking to get back and get back in title contention. You know, and fight the bigger names. You looking to, to get a rematch with Fondor at some point? Absolutely. After and Charlo. And Charlo. Yeah. Uh, you, you feel with the win, it gets you right back in the mix there? Yeah, for sure. You know, um, I'm not look, I'm not overlooking uh, Lewis Arias. I got to make sure, you know, I take care of business and I look good doing it. So um, I'm more than ready, man. I'm looking are- to make a statement with that fight and then be right back in title contention, like I said. You guys are both big, two of the best uh, United States amateurs. You obviously were, were a sensational amateur fighter. He, Did you he, guys ever cross? Was, nah, he was nowhere near my level on, on the amateur level. You know, um, he actually, he, he left the amateurs when I was, you know, coming up. You know, he had some pretty good fights with pretty good fighters, but, you know, I was running the amateurs. He wasn't running the amateurs. He was in big fights with those guys, but I was running the amateurs. What do you want to say to the fans in closing? Stay tuned. Have a time on Showtime. And um, I'm looking to make a statement. I'm looking to come out with a with a stoppage win. So stay tuned. Erickson Lubin I, wants to uh, gonna reintroduce the world to Hammer and Sledge on, Ju- on June 24th. Thank you, man. There you have it, Erickson Lubin. I talked to him in Miami. It's been, been a crazy week. I was in Miami last Monday through Friday. I was at the Madison Square Garden on Saturday. I was in Nashville Monday. I'm taping this Wednesday morning before my flight. And then uh, this Saturday I'll be in Atlantic City. In a week I'll be in Orlando. So there's all kinds of stuff. Uh, I guess we're calling this the Mark Abrams Boxing World Tour 2023 sold out. So uh, I'd like to thank my guest this week, Elijah Williams, uh, Tia Fimo Lopez, the new champ, Erickson Lubin. And uh, now next week, I think we'll talk to you from, from the home base. We're getting our office, re uh, the, the studio redone. We have hopefully some new music, some new intros. So uh, until then, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us this week on the Amos Boxing Show. We'll talk to you next week.